Okay, tonight you were going to work on these LOL diagrams. I'm going to just run through number one again, just for anybody that wasn't here. Um, so we've got these arrangements. We've got a cup of hot coffee, cools as it sits on the table. And um, our drawings should be fairly simple. Again, water has some particles. Um, we've got some air particles up here that aren't moving as fast. And the energy transfer happens from the water or the coffee to the air. Now we may not notice that because we are, um, you know, the air is, it's a big room, but if we had it in that tight container, it would transfer all that energy to the air. And we talked about how this is an LOL chart and that we had energy that was due to the phase that we were in and we had energy that was due to thermal and so we had phase energy we're gonna call it three bars and we had some thermal energy let's call it four bars our system is the coffee and so energy is leaving the system let's draw two bars here and now that energy has been transferred in the thermal phase so we have the same amount of energy in the phase because we haven't undergone a phase change, but we have far fewer thermal, far less thermal energy. Problem number two starts with a can of cold soda warms it as it is left on the counter. So let's start again with our um, drawing. So we've got a can of soda. That's cold, right? And so we've got, and it warms as it's left on the counter. So again, these particles are moving slower and we've got some air particles outside of the can and we've got some air particles that are outside over here and we also have some and let's just make them different we also have some water particles that are over here. Now, I don't know that I would expect everybody to get this, but I'm kind of doing this for a reason. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a sec. So what happens to the can? Well, the can becomes warmer. The contents of the inside of the can become warmer afterwards. So they are moving at a faster rate, right? The temperature's gone up. And the air particles haven't really got at this, but we got some water particles that have. Well, let me make them. Let me make them the red that we had here. We got some water particles that have slowed down considerably. We probably should have made them smaller, and they've slowed down so much to the point that we've got some liquid condensation on the side of the can. And I think that that's significant, you know, in that these water particles that were previously moving pretty quick are now slowed down to the point that they've actually formed a nice layer of water on the sides of the can. So the air particles haven't really changed too much. And you guys can draw all those air particles. I drew a lot. And there's not a lot of air particles that are changing. They might be slowing down a little bit. But they're not changing that much. We probably should show them moving a little bit faster, those air particles. And eventually, the air particles, the air particles and the contents of the can will eventually reach um, an equilibrium and they'll be at the same temperature. So now let's take a look at this energy bar chart. Again, we haven't lost anything. And we're looking at this perspective of the soda, right? So again, we've got our phase. And we've got our thermal. And then we've got energy going in, again, from that water particles and from the air particles. There is some energy going in. And I know this is a little messy here, guys. Um, so bear with me. And that energy is all not being used for the phase. It's all being used to change the temperature. So that thermal is changing. And you guys can fill in the drawing part.
or I should say the description of the drawing part. Okay, and then in our last one here, we've got, um, you spill some water on your shirt. I'm going to go skip ahead to number six here. Um, 20 minutes later, the water is no longer on your shirt. So I'm going to draw a little shirt. And I am kind of famous for spilling water on my shirt, so draw a picture of me here. Probably too much hair, but that's okay. Okay, so I got some water that I spilled on my shirt. And so let's just zoom in on that real quick and take a look at what that looks like. So, again, we've got some water particles that are in the liquid phase. And they have evaporated. They haven't boiled. My shirt didn't get so hot. I can duplicate this. And now there is no water anymore on my shirt. So what happened to those water particles is the question. So did they increase in temperature? Maybe a tiny bit. But the that, the but basically what we're saying is that they abs they uh, absorb some heat from my body, probably, or from the air around it, and now they're in the gas phase. Okay. So what would this look like in an LOL chart? Well, we've got our phase energy. Let's make it four bars again. And we've got from the perspective of the water, right? So we absorbed some energy to make the phase change. So Again, it did not boil, so we don't have to worry about that. All it did was evaporate because it's such a tiny amount of water that we don't have to go through that boiling phase. Just like if we left a glass of water out for one year, that glass of water would either have less water or no water in the bottom of it, but it never got to that boiling point, but it did undergo a phase change. Okay, um, and the water probably didn't heat up in temperature at all. It probably was at room temperature and went into the gas phase at room temperature. So those fastest moving particles got out of the water phase. Doesn't mean they're moving any faster necessarily once they're out. Okay, let's skip that one. I'm just going to do this last one, number eight here, and you guys can try the rest of these. We'll talk about them a little bit tomorrow before our quiz. Um, so we have a pan of water at room temperature, and we're heating that to boiling, and some of that water is boiled away. So again, remember back from our graph, give me a little bit of space here, back from our graph, we had this, 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 this. So we are realistically starting in the liquid phase somewhere about here, and we want to get up to some up somewhere in... Some of the water is boiled away, so not all of it's boiled away, so we're going to get up to here. So we've got to take into account this trend, and then this trend. So we've got two different things happening here. Um, so let's do our drawing. We're going to get from our liquid state. It's a pan of water, eh, close enough to a pan. We're going to get from our liquid state. So I've got these particles moving around, and we said we're going to use that wavy line to represent that we're in a liquid. And down at the bottom here, maybe we've got a hot plate that's a, or a stove that's kind of moving around. And we've got a heat transfer of some really big particles, really fast moving particles here, over here, that are transferring their energy to the liquid. And it's going to get to the boiling point. So it's going to get to a point where some of these particles are moving so fast that they are able to overcome air pressure and they're able to come over their attraction for each other to the point that they're getting away. Okay, that's also heating up. If we wanted to, we could put, they're heating up the air particles that are on the outside of this. So let's just assume that this was at the same temperature. These air particles that are on the outside are now heated up a little bit too. So they're heated up to that the same temperature as the steam or close to it because they're grabbing energy from that. And then some of it even boils away. So now we've got a little bit less here, but we still have 
We have a little bit fewer particles down here, but we still have, and we got a lot more particles out here. I think that's right. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, there we go. Uh, we've got, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six now. And we still got that those air particles that are still continuing to move at the same temperature. Uh, it's really hard to write on this whiteboard. Anyways, we have three transitions to get through. One, and then two. So we're going to be one, two, three. Okay. So we started with some energy, some phase energy, some thermal energy. Let's just make it three squares big. So here's my phase, here's my thermal. Okay, and we're doing this all from the perspective of the water. And we added some energy. So let's just grab, we got some energy that's being added. And initially, all of that energy goes to making those particles move faster. So the one that changes and gets all the energy is right there, right? My phase energy didn't change, but my thermal energy did. Those particles did move faster, okay? And again, now we're looking at this from the perspective of the water, uh, and we could say and the steam, but let's not involve that. Now I added some more energy, not enough to make all of it boil away, but enough to make some of it. So let's erase that and just make it one block big, and again... Just trying to make it sure that we see these things happen. So let's make that one block big. This time, we started with our, we started with that, but we're going to add that block to the phase energy. Okay? And then you can describe your drawings in there. Uh, I hope this helps. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget, we got a quiz. Um, the other part is going to be the math, which is the specific energy stuff. Um, we'll do one practice problem probably to start tomorrow, talk about a little bit of this, and um, see how we do. Okay, have a great night.